So well, it's it could be in two stages. It would be here. Uh, it would also be on the report. So let's have you test. Hey. Also good? Okay. Another one. Do you, that's what you start that way? That's what I would do. Okay. Yeah. There's some examples of my work. And they're like, well, that's cool. And then, then you can flip back over to your uh, this thing. So when you go to this, what's the shortcut? I'll, I'll help run this. <clears throat> Full screen mode, control L. So we just got to go like that. Oh, okay. should be good. So, yeah, let's see, which one of these would you want to do? I don't know. I mean, the most flashy is going to be either sure. Toyota, Porsche, or if you go down, <coughs> the um, nice Lamborghini. Oh, this was on This was on the other side? <coughs> oh, yeah, that one is. Yeah, right here. I just I watched it. I update that, that one. <laughs> okay, let me make sure. That works. Okay, so yeah, you can so we, show whatever you want, yeah, and then uh, we'll just flip back to this when you want. All right. Okay. You ready for this? No. <laughs> All right, where's your intro? And this is also oh, for you. Here, 
All right, welcome everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, this is great. I'm like starting earlier than 1245. Progress, one week at a time. So I'm super excited about today. Um, I have a good friend here, Brennan, by the way. I'm so glad that he came down and made the trip. Uh, before I introduce him, I just want to make another plug for Opportunity Quest. Deadline is this Friday. Any guesses how many applications I have so far? Zero. Hey, zero. I would give you some prize money, but yes, there he is. He'll be here all day. Yeah, I don't have any applications right now. Deadline closes Friday. So basically what that means is really good odds for those of you that enter, right? Um, I've had this looping, so hopefully you've seen it at least once. You know where to go to to the site, you know how to apply. If you have any questions, you can, you can email me. But um, it's a three-page executive summary of your business ideas. And the whole timeline is on the site, all that stuff. So go there, check it out. We doubled the prize money this year, so it's $2,000 for the grand prize. Then it goes down from there, $1,500, $1,000. Uh, top five winners all get money. Plus we have $500 for the best video. So take some notes today from Brendan to help make your video, the audio for your video better. Those are just two minute max videos that you make about your idea. Those are due one week after this Friday. So November 8th is the video submission deadline. And then we also have a $500 audience choice award. That's gonna be decided by you guys in this class. So instead of having class two weeks from today, we're actually going to go over to the GSC where anyone who's entered Opportunity Quest is going to have a little table set up. And then we're going to walk around, talk to people, and then we get a vote for our favorite businesses. The person that gets the most votes that day gets the $500 audience choice prize. So basically, long story short, there's lots of monies for lots of monies. <laughs> Lots of ways, opportunities for you guys to win real money for your ideas. So I'm excited about that. Get them in by this Friday at midnight. Okay, so moving on. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to introduce Brendan, by the way. He's a friend of mine, and I'm glad that he made the trek down here. He's a famous songwriter, producer, mixer, engineer, and husband and father of five. Your website's out of date. It says two. Yeah. Since then, he's had three more. He just had twins, so God bless him, you know. Uh, he's known as that audio guy, Brendo, from the band Scott and Brendo, and the cinematic duo By The Way May. His songs and mixes have been featured on viral YouTube videos with a diverse worldwide audience and have been heard by over one billion people, with a B. So... Um, I also just have to tell a quick story about Brendan. I, I made the mistake one time of taking like an ugly headshot of myself and saying, check this out, top that. And I used it as like one of my profile photos. And he's like, oh, it's on. So he went all out. The, the image you saw, if you saw the flyer, did you guys see the flyer for Brendan? I have to show it if you didn't see it. With the mullet and the mustache. <coughs> So, so he like did a full on, uh, grew his hair out, you know, got some clothes, did this whole photo shoot, and created this masterpiece. Oh, I have that jacket today. Right. Still has that jacket. And he sent me this photo, and I said, "You win." That is, <laughs> there it is. It's amazing. All right, so please welcome Brendan. By the way. Hello, so I'm Brandon, by the way, and so uh, what we're going to do is just start out and watch a couple quick clips of things I've done just so you can kind of get a sense of like what I do because Russ said that would be a cool idea.
So that's a clip that we did for Lamborghini. So all the sounds that you're hearing are things that we captured with the car and then, you know, processed and post and whatever. So that's a sound example. And then there's, of course, um, some other music things. Um, so we've done a bunch of work for a ton of different people. And then we also, like Russ said, I have a past. Um, if any of you have seen the Dancing Stormtrooper video, or the high school dance video, or the flying cat video, or the fruit ninja in real life video. Um, that is my music past, and that's the more poppy side, and this is the more cinematic serious side. And uh, yeah, anyway, so that's a little bit about me in terms of like what I'm doing right now. Um, so yeah, so this whole what about me, who am I thing is... Wait, what was the key command? Command uh, control L. I'm a Mac guy. I, PCs, I don't, I don't understand anymore. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to do was kind of like teach you guys a little bit about um, what I did and how I got to be able to do what I wanted to do and what I love to do. And so this is actually taken from a course that I teach online called uh, That Audio Guy. And if you're curious about music or sound, you can check it out, audioguy.co or it's at audioguy.com, either one. So, who am I? Uh, I went from a bedroom producer to a top charting, top charting iTunes artist in six months and had songs featured and all these things, had songs licensed by all these people, blah, 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 it's boring. Okay, so uh, what... Why, and, and today I'll kind of be talking about music a little bit, but it relates to being a business owner and being an entrepreneur in a ton of ways. Um, and so the, the music industry is drastically changing, or dramatically changing, as some like to say, um, because streaming services happened, right? So back in 2012, uh, me and my friend Scott made a video of cats flying in slow motion to dubstep. And at that time, it was like, what are all the things happening on the internet? You know, slow motion, dubstep, and cats. And so we like made this video as a joke. Um, I always wanted to do music, but uh, you know, like everyone else, everyone's like, why don't, why don't you have a real, real plan, real idea? And you know, I was like, yeah, so I was going to school, and we... Um, we decided to make this video. We were working a corporate job. I was doing sound on it and he was shooting it. And we were like watching the views blow up. And I don't know if any of you remember YouTube back seven years ago, but Ray William Johnson was a big vlogger guy. And yeah, yeah. So he posted the video, blew up, and then his friend Devin Graham from school, who was known as Devin Supertramp, who did like the rope swing video on the arches and all that jazz. He's like, oh, you guys should write songs So, for my videos. So we decided to pick up and do that. And like kind of overnight, it like changed everything, right? And it was interesting because I was making a living doing what I loved. And then all of a sudden, um, like we were living off of the music, right? And then in about uh, 2014, so a year of like iTunes money was coming in, people were buying our songs, we were getting them in these big videos, we started having companies contact us, and then Spotify came in 2014 and said, hey, everyone sign up for a dollar for three months, and everyone's like, oh, screw buying music, I'm going to stream it, right? And a cliff drop of sales. And so the, all of a sudden it was like, hey, well, now we need to find new ways to actually make a living doing what we're doing. And, and even since then, 2014, things have constantly changed and we have to keep changing our business plan to stay relevant. So streaming is changing how music works and it doesn't mean that you can't make money with music, okay? It takes work and creativity. And, and where this ties into normal business is the industry that you're pursuing is most likely always changing. And you always have to be adapting and finding new ways to you know, move with those changes and be creative and do work that stands out. 
And that way you can kind of like morph and not be left behind. So in the sense of audio, uh, video is one way that you can push, uh, you know, music. So if it, how many, Russ said there's a lot of people here doing music. Is there anybody? Handful, couple, okay. You, but won't raise your hand. So you are. Uh, you are. Yeah, she is. Yay, you are. It's okay. So, if you're thinking about doing audio or music or sound or whatever, um, think about the, the outside of Beyonce or Jay-Z or whatever, where it's like, well, I don't have a top charting song, therefore I can't make a living doing music. I haven't had a song chart in like since 2014 or 13, I don't remember. It was whenever the Stormtrooper video came out. That song was the last song that we had chart. And like, um, but I've made a living since doing sound and music for other things. And you get in contact with bigger companies. So for example, um, one of the companies we're working with a ton now is Purple. And I don't know if anyone knows Purple, the mattress, pillows, whatever. So they're like someone that we've established this connection because we've built up trust and reliability and credibility with these guys, and now they come to us. And so when, you, when you're going into whatever your pursuit of career may be, whether it is music or art or business or you know an accountant, whatever it may be, try and... Think outside of the box of what it means to be that thing. And there's a lot of weird niche industry things that you are able to do and be able to um, make a career out of. And I always tell people that you're responsible for your own value. Because no one else is going to make you become the best version of yourself. Only you can do that. And like, I know some people that are like really talented, but they don't do anything with it. And it's like, you can only say to those people, hey, you're really talented. So for example, again, for me, it's like music. It's like, hey, you're a talented musician. You're a talented singer, songwriter, whatever. Let's do this thing. But if they're not like motivated to do it, then nothing is gonna happen. And so when you are trying to grow a business or grow yourself, you need to make sure that you are motivated and constantly trying to find new ways to grow. And so, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I, this part's so boring. I Basically, when I grew up, everyone hated my music so bad. They said it was worthless, it was whatever, and I gave up, right? Um, my music teacher promised me that I would never, he, yeah. I had, I had a high school AP music theory teacher that was like, I hate the songs you make. I promise you, you will never find success with music in any way, shape, or form in your life. And so I was like, well, shoot, I must suck that bad. But he was just grumpy. So um, this is the first studio I had. You know, have Jesus there in the picture, have the little cable mess. And I found out that it didn't matter what people were telling me or saying or like trying to put me down because I was happy with what I wanted to do. <clears throat> and I was capable of doing things that I pursued. And so I found it to be a worthwhile thing. And again, this doesn't just apply to music. If you find that you are good or have a passion about something, use that and use that as your motivation to push forward and keep pursuing that thing and grow better at your craft. And I'll tell you why in a second. Because <clears throat> you may feel like with a business or even with your career path, like not deciding what you want to do, channel in that, that inner like, oh man, I wish I could do blank. Channel that and think about it. And it's like, okay, so you have ideas, but you don't know where to start. And you're overwhelmed by the amount of information about that thing. Or about other career options. Like, oh, I want to be a music guy or a video guy or an, uh, an artist or a painter or whatever. But which one? Oh, my heck. Like, 
you shouldn't just try and pick one and explore it and figure out if you are into it. You feel like you're stuck or you have people telling you that you can't doing it, okay? Can't do it. <clears throat> so the first thing that I tell people to do is if they want to do something, they need to do work. And so what does that mean? It basically means if you're wanting to become an artist, uh, if you want to make music, then you should make music. And I know that sounds so counter, or so stupid to say, but I can't tell you the amount of people that are like, oh, I want to make music so bad, or I want to score movies, or I want to write commercials. How do you do it? I want to do what you're doing. And it's like, okay, show me what you've done. Oh, I've never made a song. Oh, okay. Uh, why do you want to score movies? Oh, I think it would be so fun. Okay. What, who is going to hire you to score a movie if you don't have anything to show, right? And I know a girl that like, is going to college in San Francisco, and she's paid tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, for a degree in music uh, for commercial audio production. And she has never made a song. And she's like two months away from grad or three, whatever the semester lies. She's like on her last semester. Never made a song. And she's wanting to walk out of school and score commercials, score movies. And it doesn't work that way. I've been making songs since I was like 15, and they all sucked. I've made, I've made like 12 albums. And just last year, I put out the first album that I'm super proud of. It just takes a lot of work. So one thing that I like to call uh, free work, hard work, and network. So when I started out, I did um, th a bunch of free work to, like I said, you build a portfolio. You have to prove to people that what you're doing provides value. So I provided value to Scott, the guy that I worked with and did all the Stormtrooper video and whatnot. He was working on a, a film, a series, and I ended up uh, writing all the background music for free because I was like, you know what, I just, I want to score movies. I want to do this so bad, like, let me do it. So he's like, well, I can't pay you. I'm like, that's totally fine. I learned a ton. And you know what? The most of that soundtrack I made on my phone because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to record music into my computer to get it to sound good or whatever. And so I had this iPhone app called iMachine. And I made like, it was luckily like a hip hop show. I made the whole thing on that. And it did so well that he then started hiring me for other jobs that were actually paid. And then he recommended me to, to other people. And um, that then goes into hard work. So then you got to do hard work to prove that you're good. And the hard work is also learning, constantly improving yourself. And by doing that, you will grow your network. And you can reach out to others. You can say, hey, look at this portfolio I built. Look at all these things I have. And the, the biggest thing with networking is it never hurts to reach out and ask or hit someone up. So um, how did I get my songs heard by over 1 billion people? It's influencer marketing. That was my strategy. So you need to figure out a strategy for you that would work. And the reason this worked for me is because say you have me in this greasy top left corner right here. Right? So this is me. Hey, I make music and my hair sticks out a mile like a wood plank. I know this guy who is an influencer, and he knows this guy who's a CEO at some company, right? What happens is you basically get in contact, you build relationships, you do good work for this person, and they're like, hey, have you ever worked with so-and-so? No. Oh, let me introduce you. And they do, and then he's like, oh, also, he's connected, and I'm connected to these brands. And this is exactly what happened with me. It was like all these people that I started doing good and hard work for, they were growing my network. And it happens every single day. I'll go on set and I'll do sound with some people. And then they'll say, oh, you were great to work with. And then a couple weeks later, months, whatever, sometimes years, hey, remember we worked together? I have this way sweet job and I wanted to hire you because you do great work, right? So this person... 
Never underestimate the value of building your network and being nice and fun to work with. The biggest thing that I've learned, and it's nuts to think about, like, I always try to be a nice person, even if, like, I feel like I'm getting screwed, right? And sometimes it feels like it's the most worthless thing, because it's like, I just want to tell you to just, you know? But I don't, I hold my tongue, almost always. And I can't tell you how many times throughout the last whatever years I've been doing this, I've almost burned the bridge with this guy on multiple occasions. Obviously not like one individual, but multiple, because it's easy. But sometimes it's like a guy that I hate and don't get along with will randomly call me and be like, hey dude, you were so great to work with. Like, I have this job for Toyota or whatever. And it's like, oh, I'm really glad I didn't tell you what I was actually thinking. <clears throat> so the biggest thing with networking is getting yourself out there. Show up to things. Work hard. Don't be the lazy guy that just, like, everyone knows you as the lazy guy. Because working on film sets, you can pick them out. And it's like, I was on a feature, like, a couple weeks ago, and there was a guy that everybody just immediately was like, oh, this dude, man, he is just a piece of work. And he got fired halfway through the film. And like from now on, what's crazy about film sets is like you're working with all these people every single day, you're super tight, and if one person is like a rotten egg, then if you go work on another set and it's like, oh, hey, do you know anyone that does this? And it's like, I do, but never hire this guy. And all of a sudden you get blacklisted and it spreads like the black plague. Like, do not be the guy that shows up and is lazy or doesn't show up for that matter. And to tie all that up, networking never ends. Realize that you are a walking advertisement for yourself. So if you're walking around and you're lazy, you're, you're advertising, hey, I suck at what I do, right? Or, hey, I'm super gung-ho about this thing, but I have nothing to show for it. I'm just a hype man. And it's like, cool. Great. Like, I know so many of those people that it's like, hey, man, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm all this and that. And then it's like, on, at the, on the outside, they seem to, like, have a lot going on. But when you look deeper, there's nothing there. And they don't actually do anything. And again, that type of person, while they may have initial success, they get blacklisted. Because it's like, oh, have you heard so-and-so took credit for this thing? And they actually don't do anything. So you have to be careful to be a great person. So, what does it mean to show up and work hard? We basically already talked about that. Meet deadlines, over-deliver on people's expectations, and keep it professional. Be, be happy, be nice, go the extra mile, be proactive, find things that need to be done. So, when I was in high school, I worked at Cold Stone. That's me at Cold Stone. And there's proof, because that's the sign at Cold Stone. And then it's Cold Stone. Anyway, so I, I got hired there, and um, my boss sat me down before I got hired, and he's like, okay, so what you need to do is serve ice cream, check people out at the register, not, ch you know, <laughs> with money. <laughs> and when they're gone and nobody's here, clean the dishes, clean the tables, sweep. And I'm like, great. So first day, I go in. <sighs> no one's here. I guess I'll sweep. I guess I'll clean. And everyone's like, why are you doing that? I was like, that is the bare minimum of what our boss asked us to do. <laughs> so I did that because that's what I was asked to do. And within a month, I got promoted to be the manager, like the shift leader manager. And everyone's like, what? I have been here for whatever years and you had and I'm like I literally just did what the dude asked I did nothing more and it's crazy because at the time I was like well it's probably just high school it's probably a high school job no this I've noticed in other jobs that I've had outside of like my actual career like you know big boy jobs or whatever you want to call them it's all the same thing it's nuts how many people 
don't even do the basics. And again, like I said with the networking, that gets spread. If you are a lazy person or you don't do bare minimum, then it's near impossible to grow a business, especially on your own, okay? So, like I mentioned, don't burn bridges. Always work hard to hold yourself and your status. You don't want to be known as that guy, you know, or that gal, whatever, whatever you identify as. You'll always be networking, you are walking out, okay? So, as far as like, how do I get stuff that's noticed? <clears throat> Things that are good gets noticed. And, and I'll add to that things that have emotion, things that are truly you. I see way too many people like try and mimic, like for music again. It's like, oh, here's these songs in the top 10. I'm going to make a song just like that, even though I hate it. You can feel it. There's an intangible thing in good art. And all you who are studying art know what I'm talking about. You look at a piece of art and it's like, that, that has it. This other thing doesn't. And it's like, oh yeah, because that's a knockoff and they tried to copy this thing. It's like, well, I could tell. And people can tell. So as far as like audio goes, you know, like how do you network with people? How do you grow? And again, for your own specific career path, think of this. Like for me, go to film sets, intern at studios, hang out at venues, meet live sound people, meet... Anybody that has anything to do with audio in their title, get to know them. Because I never thought, especially now, like the majority of my work, if not all of it, comes just from film. It has nothing to do with bands. It has nothing to do with musicians. Like me and my, my bandmate, Doug, we're the only musicians that we interact with. And so I never would have guessed in a million years that I could make a living not making music or running a studio in that sense. So send emails, tweets, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Okay. So here's an example email. The best thing is, what is that? <laughs> Am I in trouble? Okay. So the best thing is a short and concise email. When I get emails from people that are like, Hey, uh, you know, here's, a 500 page novel on my life and why I want to work with you. It's like, I don't have time to read this. I'm sure there's great stuff in here and I'll need a tissue to get through it. But like, I just don't have time. So one thing I always tell people is, so this is an example email that I wrote to all my contacts when we started By The Way May, which is the uh, Lamborghini thingy that I'm currently doing. Not Lamborghini. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. So uh, I sent this to all my contacts. I just said, hey, this is me. You probably know me from these. Send Stormtrooper, whatever, these big videos. Here's a new project. It's this kind of thing. Here's some links. Thank you. Have a good day. And I didn't hear back from most people, and that's totally fine. But I heard back from enough that I was able to, through my network of Scott and Brenda, which was very limited, grow, by the way, May into what it is now. And we're scoring all types of things. And it's like amazing because it all starts with just reaching out. So I've said that high quality, unique work gets noticed. All right. And that is the end of my slideshow. <laughs> but the, the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to have is no matter what career you're going for, no matter what business you're trying to pursue, be the best you can be and be yourself. It's nuts how many times, like, there was a film that we scored a little bit ago, and we were both really nervous because the client is perhaps one of the most notoriously picky clients that you could imagine. And we were scared to death. And um, we were like, oh, well, you know, these are all the types of work that they've done in the past. They probably want something just like this. And, um, it, well, it was the LDS church for anyone wondering. So you can imagine, they're very picky. And so we had our assumptions about what they would want. And um, it was funny because I was like thinking so much about like, well, how should we do this? And we, we brainstormed. And I kept just thinking like, you know what? They hired us for us. If they don't like it, like, 
it's funny at this point because it's like, well, all right. So I, I talked to Doug. I'm like, dude, we need to just be ourselves. So we made this score that was like, to us, very conservative. Uh, but they were like, man, this is way left field, weird, but it works. <laughs> and I was like, huh, I guess we did it. And so the weirdest thing was being ourselves and realizing we don't have to force yourself into this mold and assume. Because the projects that we've done that on, they always turn out like crap. They always suck. There's no emotion, and there's no reason for anyone to hire uh, you based on that project. And it's funny, because I, I listened to this podcast. I was editing a podcast for a friend who's a photographer, and he, every single photographer that he interviewed, every single one, they were all like, yeah, I never get work booked from my commercial work. I only get work booked from my passion projects. And I thought that was so interesting because like with By The Way May, um, like I mentioned, there's that album that we just put out that I'm super proud of. And we've, we've had songs that I'm proud of, but like as a whole, that one I'm like super proud of. And it's funny because we don't get nearly as many licenses as we used to, but those songs that mean a ton to me that I put a ton of myself into, when they do get licensed, they're big payouts because... There's something about unique art and unique you. You as an individual have something to contribute. And there's something special about that. And it's like, if you copy Justin Bieber, or, you know, the hundreds of millions of other people copying Justin Bieber, why would I come to you when I could go to them? Because they'll probably do it for free or cheaper or whatever. And we've noticed, like, the songs that we've tried to copy they may get a more, more volume licenses, but no one cares. Because it's like, oh, you're charging, what, 50 bucks for this thing? Psh, I'll go get it for two. And it's like, because they know that it can be replaced. So if you as an employee, as an employer, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, as a whatever you do, if you make yourself irreplaceable, then you'll do great things. Because you are you and no one else can be you. The end. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? You said that the music industry is always changing. Yeah. We've seen it with Spotify. And now there's like artificial intelligence producing yeah. quality songs. How do you see the future of the music? <clears throat> So he asked, um, how do I see the future of the music industry with um, artificial intelligence making music and stuff like that? <clears throat> it's hard to say. I think um, I'm a firm believer in uh, emotion and touch, and <clears throat> I guess this is a hippie tangent, but I'll go on it. When we're recording music, sometimes, um, and and... I, I'm under the belief that this is why people, vinyl is making a comeback. Because there's something that is, people are drawn to when it comes to imperfection. And I don't know if, maybe in 50 years or 100 years, I don't know. But like when I'm making a song, for example, especially as of the last couple years, like when I was doing Scott and Brendo, it was all about perfection, and it was all about everything is timed perfectly, everything is right up center in the mix, whatever. Now, I like if there's a vocalist and they're singing a take, I will look for the parts that they messed up on, and them breathing, and them like, if any of you have recorded a vocalist, sometimes they're like, they like anticipate it. I'll take all those things, and that's where I'll make the song out of. And I think. Going back to the being you and being unique, I don't know if a computer could ever develop a soul, unless we get Blade Runner status, which then we deserve to be wiped out. But <laughs> until then, I think, yeah, be yourself. Do the best you can. Because like, I've heard a lot of AI songs. Some of them are like, yeah. But I, 
I feel nothing. And again, it's like I said, it's like a McDonald's, right? It's like, yeah, I've heard this and I could just as well go to Wendy's or Burger King to get this same thing, right? And I think, I don't know. To me, I used to be so stressed about this. Like, how am I going to provide for the rest of my life? What am I going to do? Like, beyond stress. Like, way, lay awake at night like, yeah, I made it through today, but what about tomorrow? And now I've realized, like, the worst thing that can happen is I go bankrupt. And I say, I did it. I did it for however many years. I lived my freaking dream and, like, made some great stuff. What else do you want out of life, you know? So, yeah. So, have you always been based out of Utah and you get opportunities to, like, travel or remotely, that type of thing? Yeah. So, I've always been from Utah. I grew up in Sandy. And now I'm in Linden. And now I'm in Ephraim. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, a lot of my clients, like especially the stuff we do with By The Way May, um, like all of that is almost always based out of like L.A. or New York or whatever. So like a lot of these were my Utah connections. <clears throat> um, and if you guys are curious to look this up, just for fun, bythewayMay.com. It's, it's a, a lot more complicated, apparently, than three words pushed together, four words, gush, wow, okay. So yeah, a lot of these are LA people, and those again came from connections of, uh, you know, like working with someone, them recommending you to someone else, and then them, you know, da 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 da. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, so I'll go out to LA, or I'll go out to wherever, and then, yeah, if it needs be. But that's what's fun about post. You can just work in your underwear. And I do. And I did yesterday. So I had to get dressed for this. So you said you most of the time now you're working on like a movie set. So is that music for a movie or other sound effects you So the question was, I'm mostly working on movie sets now. What is that entitled? Is it music or is it sound? So, uh, yeah, there's, and this is, again, thinking outside of the box, right? <clears throat> when it comes to music, there's songwriters, there's producers, there are singers, vocalists, drummers, guitar, like, everything. There's a recording engineer, mixing engineer, mastering engineer. Like, there are so many different options in just that route. Same with a film set. Like, when I'm on set, I'm the guy with the mic, you know? doing that thing. So that's like boom op mixing. <clears throat> so my primary focus on a film set is to capture dialogue. Um, and then usually what Doug and I do is we kind of like, we've branded ourselves as kind of this full complete pack package. So what you'll see on here, uh, for example, I guess this is a good one, music, sound design, and mix. So what that is, is we do the music, we wrote it, mix it, produced it, whatever it, we captured the sounds, like on a film set, or we went out, took a recorder, uh, you know, say you need someone typing in your video, you go record a keyboard, whatever, you layer that in, and then you mix it all together. So those are all three very different jobs that Doug and I do kind of as a sound house. So yeah, on set, it's just dialogue, but yeah, we're doing all kinds of things. But yeah, it's fun. Any other questions? Yes? Do you also run a studio out of your house to record people? Yeah. So the question was, do I run a studio out of my house? Uh, Russ has been there. It's not my house. I have a studio on my lot that's next to my house. Um, I used to do a lot of bands, but now I'm really specific about the bands I want because I don't... Because I did the pop thing for so long, I'm so <laughs> on the other side of that that it, I only like work with people that are like, hey, I want you to completely ruin my song. And it's like, great, I'm the guy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we actually have a pop project coming out um, if anyone is interested in that style of music. I'm, this, again, this is a very, I'm very proud of this. So this is the band name. The album will be called this, oh gosh, if I can even spell. Is that the right? Mechanical Ocean, or it'll be called M.O., but the artist is Nongo. 
if you want, follow us on Spotify or Apple. But yeah, so that's, I mean, that's like the only thing that I've taken on aside from like cinematic, but. Because running a studio, it's hard. And, and there's people that love it and they do really well at it. I just am way annoying. And I just, it's like, hey, I want to make this very generic song. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> so, yeah, I've had people walk in. Because I bought the studio from a guy who ran a studio. And I've had people walk in with their guitar. And they're like, hey, I want you to make me a song in a couple hours. I'm like, first off, it'll take 400 hours. And second off, goodbye. You know, it's just a different, it's all, what, yeah, it's all just a different market. But... Now you guys are like, this guy is a dick. <laughs> I'm not. I'm fun, right, Russ? He says I'm a nice guy. Any other questions? So what advice do you have for students that are in a band, they are a musician, and they want to do something with it? Yeah. Yeah, so if you have a band uh, and you want to, like, grow that band, there, and that's the other thing. I don't even touch that realm. Like, there are so many... You can be a touring band. Um, I know a guy, um, phenomenal guitarist, like, shockingly good. Um, and he was in a band for a long time, and now he's just, like, plays live shows because he loves to just play guitar. So he, like, will just be a session guitarist. And so, and then there's like bands that do corporate gigs. I know, I know a bunch of musicians that make a living performing at corporate gigs like every night. And that's all they do. They show up, they play cover songs, they play a couple originals, and then they go home and they get a huge paycheck. And it's like, it's bonkers like how many ways there are to make music. And so for those guys, my number one suggestion would be fake, well not fake, I'm not trying to tell you to lie, but Get a good recording of you guys playing live and film it like at a venue. Because I've noticed clients, it's so funny, we just did a podcast thing for a company and they're like, hey, we want you to make this intro song for a podcast. We're like, great. So we make the song and then they send, and we send it. And they're like, oh, but how does it sound with the thing? It's like, well, it sounds like when you push play, it starts the song and then it starts talking when the song is done. And he's like, oh, I need to hear it in context. And it's like, a lot of people just need to see the thing to envision it, right? So if you have a band and it's like, trust me, we can play. Or like, here's a video on my phone. Or even like, hey, here's a video that we kind of hired someone to do, but the audio sucks or whatever. Like, people can't envision the experience. So create the experience, invest in yourself, and realize that the price tag is worth it. Like, that's the other thing. I, I am such a cheap person. Hence my Crocs with holes in them that I got for free five years ago. So, like, it, I guess all Crocs have holes. Not these ones. <laughs> these are canvas Crocs. They do not originally come with holes. But I'm a cheap person, but I've realized, like, when it comes to making a good thing, the high-quality thing stands out. So, like, if you, and my friend does this with auditions. He's an actor. Everybody, it's mind-blowing. And I don't know if you guys are like into watching celebrity auditions. I do when I'm on a YouTube binge at 3 in the morning or whatever. But it's like, they're in a bathroom. And it's on their phone and it's all shaky and it sounds terrible. And like, a good scouting agent will be able to pick them out. But uh, he records with a decent camera, with a good mic pointed right at his face. And all of a sudden everyone's like, dude. Like, imagine you're watching 20 videos, 30 videos of people recorded their band on a phone. And then someone comes up and it actually has two angles. Or it cuts, or it sounds great. Then all of a sudden you're like, I want to hire these guys. Especially for corporate people. Because they, they don't have time. They just churn through stuff. And so if you send them a video that's like, hey, I'd love to play at your next event. Here's some killer things that we've done. And they're like, great, what's your price? You know? It's all about like making a good thing that stands out and being creative about it. So yeah, and, and realize like, I don't have a band, what do I do? Well, you could be a session player. Like, get in contact with studios and say, hey, I play guitar, here's some songs I've made myself, or some guitar riffs, or 
here's another thing that I, it's crazy. Like, when people are like, oh, I want to score movies or commercials. I say, take your favorite commercial or your favorite movie and score it. And then that way, when you send a demo reel, like if I got hit up that was like, hey, I want to work with you. I'd like to do a score with you or like, you know, even just like be a reference if you don't have time to do something. If someone sent me like, hey, here's a scene from this movie with the thing that I wrote for it, then I would be like, oh yeah, no, this totally works for this thing. I actually was just at a thing with a, the head of music at uh, Activision and he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, when I get reels for people uh, that want to score video games, I want to see it to a video game. And you can't like post that on the public and you know because you're stealing someone else's uh, content. But you can at least say, hey, between our private exchange, here's the thing. So I did that same thing with him. After the meeting, went home, cut together a bunch of video game clips with a bunch of our songs, sent it to him. And it's like, here's how this, I imagine, this would play in these video games. Now you can feel it and see it. So yeah, I mean, it's like thinking of all the different ways to put the person in your head, because they don't know what you're thinking. If you're like, I know I would be so cool on stage, but you have nothing but you like, I don't know, just sitting in your bathroom or like bedroom just playing guitar really crappy like on a phone, you can't envision what that would actually be like. So, yeah. Or go on Fiverr. Fiverr's great too. Fiverr. Well, yeah, anyway. Okay. You guys want to see one more video? Okay. <laughs> hey, we got to go to. Which one do you want to see? Stormtrooper? Hey, hey, what's wrong? Nothing. Could you imagine if I ate? Gotcha, Pete. Sorry. What did you say to me? time for Brendan. And uh, if you want to come chat with him after, he'll hang out for a few minutes. <laughs> 